Yo guys, I'm Ilji, also known as Iljimate, and welcome to my Zed vs Echo guide. For those of you who don't know me, I've been challenger on EOS playing Zed only for the last 6 years. And this video is aimed to encapsulate everything about the Zed vs Echo matchup, all the micro mechanics, all the macro mechanics, all the builds, items, roots, trades, everything. And anything that isn't covered in this game will be covered in practice tool later in the video just to give you guys a full view of how to play Zed vs Echo or to equip you with the tools to play Zed vs Echo. Uh, this Echo here is a low master Echo one trick and I thought it would be a good enough you know, kind of skill level to make a guide out of it because most of you will play against a lower ranked Echo. So for the summoner spells, I recommend going Ignite Flash if you take Conqueror. Otherwise go Teleport Flash with First Strike or Electrocute because the runes with respect to summoner spells is kind of the best that way. However, in Split 3, I recommend going Conqueror because, um, you know, DPS is a bit better. You have lower damage, lower burst, so it's a bit easier to play the game. And also, it's fine against Echo. For the items, I do recommend going Eclipse Rush in general, and especially if you struggle against Echo. Otherwise, you can still go my other build, which is Axiom, Hubris, and Profane. Um, but it's really up to you. Uh, for the runes, there's a lot more flexibility, I would say. And the summoners also, there's kind of a bit more flexibility. You can go Ignite TP if you really like that, but I think Flash is kind of a bit more necessary, especially with, um, you know, lower damage in the game. It means that you're going to have more timings to flash away just in general, you know, at different various points of the game. So yeah, those are the items, runes and summoners. So this game in particular, I just thought to defend my Elise's camp uh, because she's a ganking jungler. And then I face check into Echo. So the laning phase ends up being really awkward. As we trade here, we want to make sure we just keep hitting him. And then he walks back in. So I just want to take more of a trade. And then I Q and I auto and I ignite him to run away. But I realize I have ignite and he has TP. So this is always going to be pretty bad for me. And I guess it's kind of scuffed now the level one, which is <laughs> what I kind of wanted to explain. If we were both full HP, you would want to play a bit more safe. You can't push the wave, in my opinion, because Echo was win. Echo will win level 1 and especially level 2. So don't push the wave against Echo. Um, doubly so if you have first strike. Make sure you don't push and you just last hit only. And let him push. Stand, you know, in your minions or your backline minions and in his Q range so that you can get his Q uh, into your minions. Right here, I kind of troll with where I stand. If I stand back inside my minions you know, and let him queue me and the minions, then it will be way better. But that's just something to keep in mind. You know, level 1, level 2, you don't win against Echo, in my opinion. So, yeah, you want to play for your first recall, because after you recall and come back, you'll definitely start winning. And, yeah, I mean, this is a kind of a scuffed early game because of what happened in the bush. So, I need to get a recall, is what I'm thinking. And I end up getting a really scuffed one. If I show you, I queue and then W away. You can take W second and... When Echo E's onto you, you want to W away like that. Uh, so yeah, this matchup in general though is all about denying Echo's passive as much as you can while trading with him and taking successful trades. Um, yeah, my recoil here is really, really scuffed. I end up missing a bunch of minions, but it's fine. I'm going to forward it a bit because nothing really happens. I walk back to lane and Echo goes bot lane. And then here I'm thinking about what to do with the wave. And then I realize as we see him, I need to push probably, so... I hit it and I'm thinking, well, I probably can't push this wave, so I have to push it with the next wave, which is why I'm just taking it a bit slower. This is just some wave management. Knowing that I can't just shove the wave there, I have to wait for this one to come in and then shove this one. <clears throat> Echo ends up dying bot, so everything kind of goes back to even. But yeah, this is like just wave management, not really to do with the matchup, which is fine. Let's forward it a bit more. Now he comes back to the lane, he queues the wave, he's level 3, I am level 3 as well. I know I'm slightly ahead in XP because of his bad roam. And then another thing. Okay, so right here, you can place your W under tower. And then if Echo uses E, you can take your W and his E2 will follow you. And then he would go under tower. So that's just like a small thing. You don't want to abuse it too much or try to use it too much because Echo can just refuse to E you uh, like he did right there. And then I end up losing my W. So just try and do it when you feel like you can. And then right here, one thing to show so we kill him, but I'm going to go back and rewind. So right here, when he uses W, you want to walk in a way that you think it won't hit you. And then right when you see the W, you can probably walk off it if you're on the edge like I did there. And after he gets his W, notice how I don't hit him. So he gets his W right here. 
Make sure you don't hit Echo when he gets W, and just wait for it to come down, uh, because you can just wait it out. It's only 1 to 1.5 seconds, I think, of the shield, and then you can just go on him like that. Uh, similar to how you would play against the Yasuo passive, except that his shield lasts a tiny bit longer, it's still better to make sure you wait it out. So that's a very key thing to do. Against Echo in general, you want to walk off his W, so make sure it doesn't hit you, and then wait for his shield to go down before you use your combo and your spells. And this is basically the first five levels, although it's a bit scuffed. Um, so as a recap, make sure you don't push level one, make sure you play nice and safe until your first recall, preferably. And, you know, you can use your W backwards and try to bait him under tower if you really, really want to. Otherwise, just try to farm, try to chill, and yeah, that's basically the first few levels against Echo. I want to show you guys a W backwards combo, which is a bread and butter combo against Echo. So we W backwards, we Q as he E's into us, we auto and we E, and then we take the W. So this is a very important bread and butter combo because your Qs will always hit him when he uses his E. And you can throw them even more preemptively than I did here. So he uses E, I could place a W and throw it a bit quicker. But this combo is a very important one that you want to use after you're around level 5. So it's a perfect kind of timing. And also pass level 5 as well, just for the rest of the game. Using your W backwards against his E like that is very, very important. I'm just going to rewind it again. And if Echo had Hail of Blades, this Echo has Electrocute, so I can get the Auto E. However, if he had Hail of Blades, then I would have to not go for the extra Auto and just take the W. So right here, instead of autoing, I would take the W, and then I would press E and I would just run if he had Halo Blades. Because what we want to do is deny his passive as much as we can, and make sure we trade while, you know, he hasn't pocked his passive on us. So that's basically the whole reason around that trade, or that sequence, is to make sure we get a combo or a trade off without him getting his passive off, which is his main source of damage. And right here I just flash and take the kill, and yeah looking pretty good so i have eclipse now and i can kind of just take brain dead trades against echo but right now he gets level six and i just combo in but he ults at the same time which is awkward and then he w's but then jumps out so i can quickly use all my spells and ignite to kill him but the main thing here is that he uses ult really early so i just dodge it with my w by accident however if i just do the w combo when you do a w combo against echo after level six you want to make sure that his ult is not on top of himself. So if you jump on him with W or your ult after level 6, make sure his ult ghost is not on top of himself. So he was here and he walked here, so I know his ult is on me right now, which is completely fine, because then I can use my W to jump on him and trade with him and fight him while his ghost is still needs to move. So the main thing about fighting Echo after level 6 is make sure that when you ult him or you use your W to go in, that his ult shadow is not on top of himself because then you can't dodge his ult damage and if you can't dodge his ult damage there's a very sure way to lose uh, a fight against echo and this stays true for the rest of the game basically so you want to make sure when you'd combo so for instance if he was just standing still and his ghost was on top of him i wouldn't go in with my w even though i have eclipse i would probably just do w e q and then leave my w and play it nice and slow and i wouldn't ult him if he has his ult shadow on top of him so i'll go over a bit more of that like a bit later on where like you know, in Challenger, over the past years, the only Echoes I lose against is when I literally go in, I ult onto them, or I W onto them, when, usually I ult onto them when they are, like, taking a tower and the ghost is on top of them, and then they ult straight away and I get blown up. So this is very important to keep in mind, that, you know, if he has a his ghost on top of him, make sure you just use WEQ and you don't take your W, and you just take it more slower. Uh, let him move, because he's going to have to move eventually, and once he starts moving... You know, when Echo is moving and his ghost is away from him, then you can use your, you know, spells more aggressive like W2 and your ult. And you can also use your ult shadow or your W2 in general. After you, you know, after you ult him, for instance, use your ult shadow or W2 to either chase or dodge his ult um, when he uses it. Because you can do that as well, especially if you have the shadows out, for, for instance. And then say he ults here and I had a shadow like over here. You know, I could just take the shadow if I need to dodge or, you know... Or take the shadow, or not take the shadow and just tank it. But usually you want to use your shadows to dodge things and make sure his ult doesn't hit you because it's the only real way that you get blown up uh, by an echo, in my opinion, when you have Eclipse especially. So just keep that in mind, I would say. So I want to show you guys what you need to be aware of when echo comes out of fog. So he TPs and as he walks up, I'm thinking he didn't use W, but that's just me being silly because he did. And I have to use my spells on his W shield just to proc my Eclipse, which is kind of fine to do, especially if you have Conqueror. But in general, it's not ideal. So if I knew he had W, 
out, I would run away. But that's just something to keep in mind that an Echo will probably have his W on you when he's coming out of fog. And if he does hit you with the stun, you can very much die. So keep that very much in mind. And then another thing right here is when you use WEQ against Echo, after Eclipse, you WE and then you should wait for him to use his jump and then use your Q and you would probably get your Eclipse proc. But then right here, he waits quite long. So, you know, I end up missing my Q, which is fine because a good Echo will wait and then Q when they see your animation or oh, and then jump when they see your anim animation. But yeah, so those two things there is to make sure that you are very aware of Echo when he uses W or when he's coming out of fog, you should expect him to have used W and you know play a bit back and the, the extra thing is when you use weq then um you can use we and then wait you know we wait and then he uses e and then uq and then if you have eclipse it's a good trade but yeah another another combo here is a wqw auto e you know when he walks up to hit a minion or something it's very very fast you can do that as well uh, especially because an echo probably won't react with his e if you're like kind of fast with it and if you're in range so, I mean, we kill Nunu here, but that's fine. So, if I show you right here, you know, as he walks up, I'm pretty sure he's going to go for the minion. So, it depends on how good you are at kind of spacing. You know, right there, I'm able to get the combo off, which is pretty good. I hit 1Q and auto E, as well as Eclipse proc. So, you know, you can use that combo as well, although it will only hit 1Q. So, be very, very careful of it as well, or aware of that. I want to show you guys a little fight against Echo. So, right here... You know, I have Eclipse, I'm very strong, so I can just go in. But when I go in, I run away as well, because I want to make sure that he doesn't get his passive. And once he does get his passive, I let him create some distance before I ult him as well, which is very important, because then he's going to ult back, and a lot of his movement speed from his passive time has kind of run out. So right here, if you see, I don't ult him straight away. I make sure I auto, and then I auto him again, and then I ult him, and all of that time that he had with the extra movement speed, kind of wasted because he ults back in to die so you know when he gets passive the main thing here is you know using eclipse to trade is fine but i deny his passive and run away which is also good but when he gets his passive you want to make sure that you auto and you try to auto again let him run away with some extra movement speed before you ult him and then go in with your w again just to kill him so yeah it's pretty good to have this kind of sequence of a you know all in after you have eclipse especially where you just use your combo and then you run you know and you ult after using one w you know and you get your w up again uh it's a very good combo with the conqueror i would say you know in general with conqueror using a w first before ulting is quite good so yeah something to keep in mind so right here i'm pretty fed but i kind of don't have full hp and this is what i wanted to show you about his ghost thing as he hits this tower he uses w and his ghost is quite pretty much on top of him and a lot of echoes when you use your w on them will just run away but the really really good echoes in general you know for instance right here let's say for example my tower was you know higher hp the really really good echoes would kind of just stand still when i use a w combo and they would wait for you to either you know take your w and alt they would just stand still on their ghost like that's what they do in, in like challenger like challenger echo one tricks have done this and they kind of always beat me because i always go in but now I'm a bit more aware where, you know, you don't want to just jump on him. Because if you jump on him and you get ulted, you insta-die. You know, he uses his W and his ult. You know, it's pretty much no way to counter it. As soon as you press ult on an Echo who has a ghost on top of him, he's just going to ult as soon as like you're halfway in your ult. And even if you had flash, he's still going to hit you because the timing on it is going to be quite, like, impossible to dodge. So it's very important to just play it slow. Just use W or, you know... Don't ult him and don't use a W2, just WEQ or WQE and just run away basically. Um, but if I was trying to kill him right here, then I would probably just go in because he kind of inted, like he walked forwards. So that was, an, that was a window right here for me to go in. If I take my W here and then ult him, then he ults. His ult wouldn't hit me. But in general, the echoes that are really good will really just stand still. Although I guess, you know, most of them you probably won't play against because they're in like challenger. Um, but yeah, uh, like... Usually, that's what you want to be careful of. And right here, I guess I don't have full HP, so I just want to chill. But yeah, uh, when Echo is taking tower especially, it's a timing where you need to be careful because you don't want to just jump on him willy-nilly because it's very likely that he was standing still as he hit the tower, so his ghost is on top of him and he can ult you. So that was the main thing to talk about right there. So another thing, right here, I see Echo coming through. I just combo him, use Ignite. And, you know, if you can, make sure you kill him before you use ult 
So I kind of knew if I get the passive auto attack and a Q, he would die. Um, and that's the ideal thing to do. If you can kill Echo before he ults and before you ult. So none of you would use ult, but you can kill him. Or you force his ult without using yours. And then you can use your ult to follow. But usually that's something you can only do when you're ahead like I am right now. But um, yeah, that's cool. that's very ideal way of playing it. Because a lot of the time the Echo, you know, just simply won't ult like you did there. Or, you know, it's very easy to just follow him and kill him. So, yeah. Okay, guys, I'm in practice tour now because that game, I feel like I couldn't really get everything out. But, yeah, I'll kind of just recap a bit and talk about some more tips. So, let's say this is an Echo. And we're just laning. Um, let's get another dummy. So, he uses E like this, right? We're level 5. We have double longsword and boots. And he has, like, I don't know, amp tome and dark seal. Something like that. Um, probably plus refillable. We both have extra refillable. But if he uses e E1 like this, and I'm standing here, you know, I wait for him to E1. You know, let's say I'm doing this. He E's once, and then I get ready, and I get my mouse here ready. And then I place the W. As soon as you see his little E2 animation, he does a little stop. You know, when he uses it, you place the W backwards. You throw the Qs. Um, wait, let me just get all to refresh cooldowns. So you place the W backwards. And depending on the angle, so E1, E2 would land him here. If he came from this angle, E1, E2 would land him here. So we can just line up the W accordingly in a nice little line. So in this case, it's like this. So I place my W maybe around here. And then I'll throw the Qs and then I auto auto E as he jumps onto me. Or if he, you know, if he has Halo Blades, then I would make sure that I only do a W, Q. So he jumps onto me. You know, finally this thing, this one does a little E2 animation, which is he stops. You use your W already, you throw the Qs already, basically. And then you auto E and you take the W. And that's very important, I think. Uh, in general, this trade is very important. In lane, after level 5, after your first recall. And this is how you kind of win trades and, you know, get advantage against an Echo. Um, if he has Halo Blades, you need to be very careful. So you just do W, Q, and you take the E. Or take the W and then press E and run away. Also, another thing to be careful of is make sure you don't press your W too far away because you sometimes you just need it right here and that's all it takes to just do that and get away from the um, to get away from the Echo passive. So the whole point of this combo, this bread and butter combo, is to make sure he only gets two stacks of his passive on you maximum and you're able to get away before he procs his full passive to get most of his damage out, right? You do that and then you take the W. If he has Halo Blades, it will look something like this. Just something like that. Or you would, you know... You could also just do that as well. All of those are fine when he has Halo Blades because with Halo Blades, he procs his passive a lot easier and you need to be careful about that. So the whole matchup is just trying to stop Echo from procking his passive on you. That is the main bread and butter W backwards combo that you can use against Echo, especially after first recall. So another thing I want to show you guys to be careful of is when you're taking the tower, when you're hitting the enemy tower and they have Echo, you need to be very, very careful. So he could just be like, not even there, so if I clear that, I mean, he's like here or something. If he's there and he places a W and then he walks out as if nothing is going on. So if he walks like like this, like this, and pretending like he's not using his W or he hasn't used it, you can get really like owned by his W. So when you're hitting the tower and taking platings especially, you need to be very, very careful of that. When an echo comes from fog um, in general, it's very, very likely that he did use his W. And, you know, a lot of Echoes do like to just use W from Fog and then walk out straight away. So if you just be careful and back out, respect the first or second time. And if he's not using his W, then you can play a bit more aggressive and you can just kind of get a feel for it. But a lot of Echoes will just, you know, use their W from Fog and then walk out. So make sure you back out from the tower and you don't keep attacking the tower. Because if you get caught by his W stun like that under the tower, you're probably just going to die. So keep that in mind. With that being said, let's say that an Echo is over here. You know, let's say this is in fog. Okay, no. Let's say he's over there or something. Or the minions were a bit further up. And let's just say this one was, is in fog. And let's say the wave is around middle. You know, if he uses W and he walks out. And we have Eclipse as well. As soon as I see him walking out, what you want to do is you want to walk either to this side. Or just walk backwards if you're really, like, insecure. Or if the jungler is, like, really over here or something. With the enemy. And you, can't, you don't think you can walk here. Then just walk backwards. But when you see an echo coming from fog. When you see them, just walk upwards like this, especially if you have Eclipse, and then wait for him to use his E on you and use your W backwards and use the combo that I said earlier, the bread and butter combo, as he jumps in. And you can also be aware of where his W is. Um, the last second of his W, you can see it, right? So 
when you see it, that's also another time to react and make a plan really fast about where you want to use the W and where you want to go and how you want to trade. So yeah, that, you know, when Echo uses W from Fog, there's just another one in lane. Let's say the lane is here. That's something you can do and how you can play it. And, you know, if he dodges W, for instance, and let's say he's over here, you know, he has his W right here. That's where he used it or something like right here from there. And then I walked over here. You know, he has to choose between jumping on me or jumping on the W. A lot of the Echoes, they jump into their W first and then go on you. So if they do that, you can just walk out a bit more and wait their W out. And yeah, waiting their W out is a decent little strategy. Um, so yeah, like if, if you know their W is here and you know you can get some distance outside of their W where they can't just E and then jump on you or get their W and then E and jump on you, you know, it's very good because then you just wait it out and then you come back in after his shield is down and his stun is gone and you just trade after that as well. But if you can't get away, then just use your W backwards and do the W backwards combo as well. Uh, if you have Eclipse, you'll probably still win the trade. I think I did one of those trades um, in the game as well where you saw uh, he got his W and I just traded into him when he teleported to the tower. Um, and with Eclipse, you kind of win a lot of trades. So, yeah. So, for instance as well, right here in the side lane, let's say we are kind of in the mid to late game now. And he, we are standing in a bush and he is pushing the wave. What you can do is just wait in your bush. When he uses his Q, like as soon as he uses his Q, you can use your WQW auto E onto him. And then he's going to try and E. So the Echo would probably E backwards to try and get the Q to hit you on the back end. And when he does that, you just ult as his Q comes back. And you'll probably dodge his... Um, his uh, his Q on the way back and also get rid of another passive stack that he could get on you. So in the mid to late game, it's all about his passive again, as well as his ult. So let's say he walks up from over here and then he Qs the wave. You want to go him and straight go on him straight away because then his ghost is probably going to be around here. If you think about it, you know, his ghost is probably going to be from there when he walks up and Qs it. So you go on him straight away, make sure his ghost is not too close. You auto E and then you kind of just space space a bit like this but he's probably gonna you know use his e to try and run away and then when he uses e don't just ult him too quick you can walk up you can auto e and then you just kind of want to wait because if he uses ult you can still lose if you get hit by his ult so make sure you keep very very you know careful of that but when he uses q and then he jumps away you can walk up you can auto e and then you can either just dodge to the side or you can ult him on second thought, you could probably just dodge to the side because if you do this combo and then he E's away and he has a Q coming back from the wave, then you can probably just walk to the side and hit him like that because his Q probably won't hit you as long as he doesn't have E. So, you W combo and then he uses, let's say his Q is out on the minion wave and then he E's away. You, jump, you walk like this and you just keep following him with auto E. But then you can walk like you can walk like this basically. So if his shadow, his ghost comes in from here, right? You all do this. He uses his E backwards, and then you can walk up auto E and then walk around like this, just in case his ghost might hit you. And you can kind of just keep going like that, right? And you'll have a lot of haste. So if I um, not auto refresh, we do this, right? He uses E, I auto E, auto again, and then I E and I walk this way. You know, if you walk a bit like this, when he does ult, you do get a small timer where you can probably walk out of it if you're on the edge of the Echo ult. So when you're trading against Echo in general, do walk a bit to the side and a bit outwards just in case he uses ult and you can probably dodge it a lot of times. So in between your spells and your auto attacks, walk like that, auto E or E, I guess, and then walk like this. It's kind of fine. It's a bit scuffed because I don't have Axiom and usually in my build, I do have Axiom by now. Um... I also didn't take the haste rune, and I usually take that, so that would have given me a bit more haste. But either way, um, you know, make sure you trade. When you're trading against Echo, you do walk a bit out outwards, away from his ghost, in case he uses his ult. And then you'll probably win. Um, and when he if he keeps running away, for instance, you know, his ghost is not going to be on top of him, so his ghost might be on top of him when he ease away. So that's when you have to be careful. But then you just do this, you stand here, you keep chasing, and he's going to keep running outwards. Then you ult onto him. And his ghost will be around here. Because obviously he went there. And then he went there. So his ghost walks up. And then it goes here. And then it will be walking back. But you would have ulted him. He would ult back around to here. And I would have an ult shadow here. So for instance I would probably just ult him. I would ult him. Right. 
and then he would ult, my ulti he probably wouldn't go through, and then I'll take my ult shadow to follow. So that's like the best case scenario, where you ult him, and you can ult back to follow his ult. So you wait for his ult, and then you take your ult shadow to chase. So this is very important as well, right here. Um, you know, if I chase him, so let's go through the sequence again. He walks here, he uses his Q on the wave. I just go on him like this, and then he E's away. So I walk up, and then I E as well, and I just keep following like this. Make sure I dodge his Q on the back the back end, so that he can't get his passive. I auto E, and I keep doing this a bit as I chase him. And then when he walks around here, his ghost will be around here, so he, I can ult him. And then he can ult back, and I can take my ult shadow to chase. Also, another thing to be careful of is if you ult Echo and your ult shadow is on top of his ghost and he uses ult, don't ult straight away because you'll jump into it. So you have to wait for him to appear, which is an extra half a second, I would say. And after he appears, you take your ult shadow and then you just chase him further. So yeah, that's basically the sequence. You want to open with W when he, you know, when you're hiding in a bush, for example, or if you know you want to fight him and his ghost is not on top of him, open with W and then he would E away. And then chase, auto E, and then if his ghost is on top of him, make sure you do this little movement. Because I think this movement has saved me a lot of times as well as I chase Echoes. I just run to the side and, you know, play on the edge of his ghost. And then if he keeps running, you ult him just to chase him down. Take your ult shadow after he ults back, chase him with another W. So that's kind of a good sequence that you can have against Echo. And the main thing about it is that you're trying your best to make sure he doesn't get his passive on you. And he doesn't get his ult on you. If he gets both of those on you, you're most likely just going to die. Especially in the mid to late game, where Echo has a lot of damage with his death cap and, you know, all of his items. Okay, let's say we are both full, full items and Echo is taking the tower. I think I discussed this a bit in the game, but I didn't get to say. So, you can walk up, you use your W combo, and then you need to be very, very careful. So, we are very late in the game. Let's say we are, like, level 18. We can walk up and then just wait. Um... We can use W. Okay, well, that was a bit bad, but let's say we can use W. But be very careful. Instead of doing that, you want to walk up and then just use WE. Um, WE. And wait for him to react. If he uses E, then you can Q him or you can ult him. But be very, very careful. Because a very good Echo would stand on top of themselves. And, you know, I guess late game, as Zed, you have enough damage. So just use your W and then just wait and just keep the W out. To give yourself more options. So yeah. If their ghost is not on top of them. Then you can just ult them. So if their ghost is like that. You can just ult them. Um, and you probably will win. As long as his Q is not out. So be very careful to ult them. When their Q is out. Because their Q can be out. And then you ult onto them. And there's no ghost. But they E. And then they get you at the angle. Where they E. And then they hit you. And then their Q hits you. And then they ult you again. You can get one shot like that. So be very very careful in the late game. It's all about his passive. His passive will one-shot you. So you just play to deny that. So for instance, right here, he's taking the tower. I just walk up. I use WE. He might E like that. And then I would ult him straight away before he gets E2. And then I would use my Qs. And he would probably ult back. So I wouldn't take the W. But even if I did take the W, for instance. So I WE. Let's say he jumps over. Um, let's say he jumps over here to E onto me. So I WE. He jumps. I ult him quickly. And then I do that, and then he takes his ult shadow, but then you can take your ult shadow like this. Okay, so if you understand that, you WE, you ult him after he uh, E's over here. You take your W, and then he would use his ult to try and get you with it. And then you take your ult shadow, and then you'd still have a shadow out. So, like this, for example. And then if I use my Qs, it's fine, because I have Conqueror, and I still have this shadow right here. And then I can use my E and my Qs. And then my shadow runs out. So that shadow will last a very long time. So yeah, that's something you can use. You WE, you ult him after he uses E. You take your W to bait his ult. Then you take your ult shadow to dodge it. And you have a shadow on top of him. Um, so very late game. This is a decent combo. You know, WE, wait for him to do that. And then you ult. He is the ult on his E2. So that he doesn't really have anywhere else to go. Except his ult shadow. And you can press your spells preemptively before he uses ult. Because it's very late game and he has to use it. Um, otherwise he'll get one shot by his spells. And then you jump back out like this. So you dodge his ult and you dodge his E2. And yeah, it's pretty it's pretty nice basically. That's not the combo, but yeah. <laughs> it's you W E, he E's away, you ult onto him. Oh, you ult onto him, take the W. Q E, take the ult shadow after he ults back to dodge his ult. 
So that's a very, very nice combo in the late game, I would say, where you would probably win if you are nice and patient. Uh, but you need to be very, very careful. Um, if he pokes his passive in the late game, just expect to die, basically. And that's like the main, main stuff to be aware of. In the late game, it's good to go for team fights instead of 1v1s against Echo, in my opinion, because you have so many more options with your dashes and everything. Whereas Echo is a bit more linear, even though he has his ult to go back on and, you know, his jump. You have a lot of shadows, your spells are on lower cooldowns, kind of, and he relies heavily on his passive and getting that off. So if you can find him with your team, then, you know, you can just kill him. But if you had your team here and you're trying to team fight, it's good if you can find Echo and just combo him. Or if you want to wait with your team, you know, maybe your teammates can CC him. Then wait for a CC, and once they CC Echo, you just go straight on him, right? So... Holding your spells in teamfights just for Echo is a decent idea because as soon as you get CC'd and you can combo him with all of your spells late game, he's going to die. So he won't be able to get his ult off and you'd very likely win the fight. So yeah, something to keep in mind in the mid to late game in the teamfights. Make sure you keep an eye on Echo and you know where he is and then you know you know what your champs do as well. So you think about whether he's going to get CC'd and if he can by your team, then you can just combo him. So holding your spells for that combo on a CC'd Echo to kill him is a decent idea. Another combo I barely talked about in the game is... So when you have Eclipse, let's say I just have one Eclipse and not the six item. You use WE and then he E's away and then you Q him. It's a decent thing to do. Uh, especially if you're using a long range WE and he's just trying to run away and he E's. You have to wait for his E and then Q after. And you'll probably get the Eclipse block anyways, right? So you WE, he E's away and then you Q. You probably still get the Eclipse Pock. Um, although, wait, that's not right because it was hitting the other dummy. WE, then you Q after he jumps and you get it. But if you WE and you Q too quickly, he can, you know, just jump. And a lot of the Echoes, they like to just jump straight away. So you WE and they would insta jump. So then you can just Q. And yeah, so a lot of Echoes will just jump straight away. So just keep that in mind and hold your Q for their jump. So that's basically it for the guide. Um, let me know if you have any other comments or questions with regards to Zed versus Echo. Uh, I might have missed stuff because I kind of did this on the fly. But yeah, um, we went over how to use his E2 against him by using your W backwards and getting a trade without using his passive or without letting him get his passive on you. We went over how to kind of avoid his W, you know, wait out his W before you auto him in the early game. And later on, you know, around level 7, 8, when he uses his W from Frog and he tries to go on you, kind of how to read that, how to walk and maneuver and wait things out. We also went out, went over how to, you know, make sure his alt shadow doesn't hit you and when to engage so that it doesn't. Um, also, another thing that we already went over, of course, is going Eclipse is very good. So just keep these things in mind. Um, if you are very confident in the matchup, though, go full lethality without Eclipse. Um... But if you kind of just need help with the matchup, just go Eclipse. It really makes things a lot more trivial and a lot easier. But yeah, I don't think this matchup is too hard once you put all of these things together and combine everything. Mainly because Zed is more fluid than Echo in the mid to late game. So you do outscale in terms of mobility, which is, in my opinion, more valuable against other champs in the game. Whereas Echo, it's kind of easy for a champion to just CC him and all of you just pile onto him and he would die before he can ult. So yeah, uh, I think it's kind of Zed favored. But yeah, do let me know in the uh, comments any other champs that you want me to cover. And I'll do my best to do that as well. All that good stuff. What else? What else? Yeah, that's basically it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope it was useful and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.